Good afternoon, everybody, and um, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm Rosemary Collier from the University of Warwick, and we're partners in the Horizon 2020 Smart Protect thematic network. Um, this afternoon, we're going to cover um, some of the smart tools available for pest and disease management in outdoor vegetable crops. And then we're also going to hear about a new approach to the automatic identification of insects. Just a bit of housekeeping. Um, I think you've probably all done it anyway, but please turn off your camera and mute your microphone when you're not speaking. We're recording the session, uh, so please be aware of that and it will be available later. Uh, we've been awarded a, a basis point for this event, so if you'd like the basis point, please email me your basis number and postcode and we'll we'll go through all the presentations first um, and we'll take questions at the end of the presentations. But please feel free to type questions in the chat as we uh, go along. So without further ado, I'll uh, hand over to uh, Sabine Pollet uh, from Inagro in Belgium and Sabine is the coordinator of the network and she's going to introduce the project. Thank you, uh, Rosemary. Good afternoon, everyone. Can you see my screen, please? Yes, yes. It? OK, that's perfect. Thank you. Uh, so as Rosemary already told, I'm going to give a, sh a short introduction about our project and I will show you the platform with the uh, smart IPM techniques. Um, smart Protect is a European project and we have been working for three years with 15 partners from 12 countries um, on that. And here you can see uh, the countries who are involved in the project. We have been uh, spent quite a lot of time in the beginning of the project for the summarize all the new IPM techniques uh, who are already on the market or which have a TRL level with seven, eight or nine. So who will be introduced to the market soon? And after all the validation of this information, we have done an evaluation and a benchmarking exercise in order to select the most promising techniques uh, to demonstrate for the farmers in the different countries. So we are now at the end of the project. We are uh, busy with uh, the exchange, the trainings, the webinars like this, the online trainings or the face uh, the one to one. Um, uh, explanation of farmers and of course this is all uh, done by knowledge management by our Greek partner as well. I will show you the platform in the meantime, but here you have the QR code so you can scan this and you will be linked immediately to the platform of Smart Protect with all the IPM tools. And if you go to our website, you can see here the link. Um, then you have on top of it the, the link to the platform. So if you click on it, you will be able to to see a selection of almost 200 smart IPM techniques and they are divided in four group of techniques. So we have the applications, decision support techniques, diagnostics and the monitoring techniques. But uh, we choose to translate all this information in the language of each um, country that uh, participates in the project. So of course, here I saw you now in English, but if you are a Greek farmer, you can select the bottom languages on the right top of the platform and then you, you choose Greek or you choose the Spanish version and all techniques will be translated into the selected languages, enabling this the farmers to, to uh, have all this information in their own language. You can have you have a search function, so if you want to know something about UV um, disinfection, you just type the word UV. We are now in the session of open field vegetables. You can select yeah. here by greenhouse of open field and then you will have only the, the techniques which are available to use in the open field or you can use the technique, the technique type. Or you can say I'm only interesting in all techniques about insects or fungi or beneficials, and then you will have selection only of these techniques. Once you have to make your search, you will get um, an overview of all selected techniques. And it's very short because we don't want to give a lot of information, because if you click on each item, you will get some more 
information more in detail. You have the, the website of the company, you have a short description, you have the crops which it's already used in, uh, possible crops where you can use it and the countries it has been used already. You can see if it's working against a special kind of species and if you need any technical requirements. This is an example of a cap trap, so a smart trap we have been using in several countries from the project. Again, a small description, the link to the website, and then you can see it has been used in cabbages, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, and you can use it in other crops as well, and it works against these uh, four species. You see the country of origin, so we have a lot in a small overview, a lot of information on the technique you are interested. In. Sometimes you also have a, a link to a movie where you can see um, the technique working, and sometimes we also provide some details on the cost, although this is quite difficult because it's depending from country to country or from company to company. If you are a big farm, you might be able to negotiate a better price uh, than you have. If you only have a small farm. So this was a short overview of the platform. Uh, it's free accessible, so we invite all of you uh, to use it. And then we have make a selection of the best techniques uh, to demonstrate to the farmer and case studies uh, for the last two years. So we scored the technique technique. So here you see um, the monitoring apps and then you can see that Sarscarvio app got a high result. So we have been testing these in several countries. And you can see here a map of Europe with our participating countries. So we have a hub in the north and the south and the central of Europe where we are organizing a lot of things like seminars, interactions with farmers and training sessions or open days. And now I will give you a very short overview, some, some pictures. This is my colleague Jonathan. He will be talking on smart traps um, in this uh, webinar as well. And here he is explaining about the smart traps and the cabbages in an open field day of Inagro. This was an open field day from last uh, autumn around Smart Protect, where we invited almost 100 farmers. Here you can see a demo event uh, from our German partner uh, on mobile smart apps and cabbages here. This year, here a picture of a demo in Estonia from our partner and one in Latvia as well. Last uh, autumn on plant protection and the vegetables. And also the southern countries are giving seminars uh, on IPM, smart IPM tools in Spain. We have this as well in Portugal and we participated, uh, Jonathan as well, and our France colleague in the International Horticulture Congress in France, where we have been, where we been able to talk with a lot of people and to demonstrate the project outcomes. And last winter we were invited in Portugal and in the north of Portugal we organized a seminar for the Portuguese farmers on smart IPM tools as well. So you can see we have done a lot of uh, work on that. And here's one of Rosemary's work in UK, the benchmarking traps in carrots and the bean seed fly. And all this information is now going to farmers, but you can also visit our website. You will find some more information on the fact sheets on diseases on uh, brassica tomatoes and alliums on leeks. And I just want to finish uh, with the message that we are also linked with uh, 22 other EU projects working on IPM. Uh, so I invite you to share this information as well, uh, particularly IPM works. IPM decisions are really interesting uh, as they are also working on IPM uh, tools um, in vegetable production. So this brings me to the end of my presentation and here at the last slide you can find uh, our social media accounts and you can also subscribe to our newsletter Smart Protect. So I'm happy to answer your questions if there are anyone. I'm not sure about that. I think there are yes, there's questions. something in so oh, yeah. OK. Oh yeah, Jonathan, who has mentioned the platform. Yeah. yeah. OK, thank you, Jonathan. Brilliant. OK, thank you very much, Sabine. Um, yeah. So now we'll move on to, to Mike, Mike Kaminiaris from Agenso in Greece. 
uh, and Mike's going to talk about tools for de detecting plant disorders due to pests and diseases. Over to you, Mike. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Let me share my screen first. Can you see? Yes. Perfect. So, as I've been previously mentioned, one of the categories of uh, Smart Protect platform are the tools for detecting plant disorders due to pests and diseases. Uh, practically, those, uh, let's say, applications work to detect any abnormality that may uh, appear, and it can be caused uh, by pests, diseases, or even nutritional stresses. So, the use of such applications allows efficient uh, integrated management at the end. Uh, how is it being performed? Practically, it's an, an easy process. It's working through mobile applications for smart devices. Uh, their function is by image capturing and upload of uh, good quality images. So there is a correlation of the result of the image with the database of, an, of the information to provide a, an accurate uh, identification of the problem. Uh, the benefits of, of using such applications for uh, smart devices uh, are several. Uh, speaking of which, the reduced cost of co uh, compared to laboratory analysis, uh, which can be performed at a later stage. Uh, the effective initial, uh, it's an effective initial tool for uh, fast screening at the first stage as it gives uh, really quickly information. Uh, it's uh, also a method that is compatible with different uh, operational systems of smart devices such as Android or iOS. And uh, it can incorporate uh, the amount of uh, applications that appear in the market can incorporate a really, a really big number of crops uh, that you can scan with. And then you get a visualized result of, uh, of what happens. So I'm going to present you some of the available uh, applications that you can download uh, freely, most of them. First one is Plantix, is a free mobile application that identifies problems due to pests and diseases. Uh, as you can see uh, below, it's being used for, uh, for a wealth of uh, crops. Uh, and it can be used to, to detect abnormalities, uh, let's say, caused by bacteria, fungi, insects, etc. Uh, there is a free version of the application and there is also a paid version, depending on the number of crops that the user is uh, selecting. So based on the ben uh, benchmarking uh, process that we performed, uh, you can see here the radar chart uh, with the respective score for different um, uh, aspects, different fields for its technology. As you can see, this one lacks in buying costs as there is also a paid version. And also the application range is not uh, the, the optimum because there is not uh, a wealth of crops regarding uh, its use uh, in, let's say, correlation with, uh, with other applications. Another one is Cropalyzer. It's a tool to identify major pest diseases in several crops. And again, it's a, it's a free application. As you can see, the radar chart represents, depicts the, the characteristics of, of this uh, application. Then it's uh, Buntata application, is an Android app. Uh, unfortunately, this one is only functioning for potato cultivation. Again, it's a free app. It's an Android application, and you can see in the radar chart of this app uh, the, the low, let's say, score in, in crops because it's uh, specified to, to potato. Then Planticus app is available in Google Play only for three crops, for tomato, bell pepper and cucumber. Again, also a free application. And in the radar chart, you can see the, the lack of strength, let's say, in the crops and application range uh, fields. Uh, Agrix tech uh, application, uh, it's being used in different crops, let's, uh, let's say like bell pepper, cauliflower, cucumber, etc. There is a cost depending on the country, which makes it, uh, let's say, not uh, a high score one. And uh, because it's also used only for uh, de uh, detecting fungi uh, problems, you can see the radar chart uh, in, in correlation with the characteristics. Uh, Crop Scanner is another application. It uh, visualizes the, the result. Uh, it gives uh, on the back end an extensive data analysis. It's being used for bell pepper, cucumber, and tomato. 
And again, it is uh, a free application to download to your device. In the radar chart, you can see uh, the characteristics. The production system lags slightly because it's being used for uh, greenhouse production only. And there is a special training needed, so a uh, user uh, will need to, to get trained on how to, to use this application. Then CropWise uh, is another application available in App Store. It uses satellite images uh, to uh, understand what happens in its, uh, let's say, area. Up to now is available uh, in bell pepper for insects and nematodes. You can see this, that is uh, the radar chart, uh, with the crops and the application range being a bit, uh, let's say, lower ranked. Then Cropify uh, is another application to identify uh, problems caused due to pests and diseases. It's a web uh, application, not an, uh, an Android or iOS application, where a user can upload an image of a, a, an infected or infested uh, potato or tomato crop and get a video uh, with the explanation of, of the problem. Uh, again, respectively, the, the radar chart of, of this application, this software uh, online application. In general, uh, the, the outcomes is that there's a wealth of uh, applications, available applications to use uh, for uh, identify problems due to pests and diseases. In general, it is a cheap preliminary screening before going to lab analysis that give an early detection. Uh, some of them are free, while some others uh, may have a small fee to download or to use for uh, further crops. And it can assist to, to perform a detection and help to avoid big losses in yield. Uh, and first of all, and last to say, it's uh, easy to use in smart devices. Thank you very much. Excellent. Thank you very much, Mike. Um, if anybody has got any questions, because we're doing pretty well for, for time, um, please um, yeah, raise your virtual hand or, or type something in the chat. OK, right. So now we'll uh, move on again. Um, so now uh, Jonathan DeMay again from Inagro is going to talk to us about um, a range of smart traps for vegetable crops. Uh, I can see your slide, Jonathan. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you very much, Rosemary. I guess Sabine and Mike already know that I'd like to talk a bit more or a bit longer than the others. So if we're a bit ahead of time, maybe this leaves me one or a couple that's, of minutes <laughs> extra. That's, that's fine. That's fine. <laughs> yeah, but I, w I won't rush it. Um, so my name is Jonathan de May. I work for Inagro. Yeah, didn't really introduce uh, Inagro. It's a it's a practical uh, research center, it's a trial station in, in the western part of Flanders. Um, the, my presentation goes on uh, smart traps in vegetable um, production. Um, this is the content of my presentation. Very small on the focus of Smart Protect because we're talking on smart trapping, but um, uh, why and how we selected some items will maybe be a bit clearer. Uh, small introduction why we do smart monitoring, uh, a bit of the types of monitoring systems, which uh, will you will see it will flow into the presentation of Yanis. Um, uh, a small overview of uh, uh, what we are aware of, technologies that we are aware of within the Smart Protect uh, platform, uh, and then some of the work we've done on, on benchmarking. We also did a SWOT analysis, which is, I think, a uh, good, good document to discuss uh, the, the, the do's and don'ts, and, and of course, the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats of smart trapping. So the focus for Smart Protect, we want to implement smart IPM uh, methodologies, technologies for innovative vegetable uh, protection. It's it's a thematic network. It's not per se a research um, project. We want especially um, that uh, knowledge is shared and, and flows through the different regions in Europe. 
that's why we also have quite a broad um, uh, partnership. Um, um, we try to be, we selected six uh, crops, uh, three, no, seven, a bit to, to be a bit more crop oriented to make it clear for the for the growers if I'm a brassica grower uh, and especially Rosemary and Alex did a great job on, on elaborating fact sheets and also always were a driver throughout the project to, to make sure that we stay a bit crop oriented. Um, and we also uh, looked at open air uh, uh, horticulture and greenhouse uh, cropping. So in order to have some cross pollination there, um, because in the greenhouse it's a more controlled environment, technologies that were there are maybe interesting for uh, outside growing uh, conditions, but it's not always difficult, let's say, to translate. Um, why smart monitoring? We elaborated within the project quite nice pyramids on IPM. One of uh, um, the, user, the, the, the members of the steering committee and at the first steering committee asked us, what, do you, what, what is IPM for the, for the project consortium? Then we thought on it. We said we're going to use a pyramid um, to represent it. It's, it's a well-known model, but we made a bit our own uh, let's say also visual attractive um, uh, figure of it. We're within, let's say, the second pillar. Monitoring is an essential part, I think, uh, of uh, decision support. Um, but the traditional monitoring, as we know it, uh, sets some, some limits in time and space, which are, of course, related to the resources you have uh, to monitor. And they require quite some logistical effort um, you monitor with, with uh, sticky plates or water traps. Someone is driving around, uh, collecting the samples, samples are analyzed and so on. So you're a bit limited in comparison to smart monitoring where you can increase uh, the monitoring frequency. Uh, for our own systems, I'm thinking of carrot uh, rust fly, where we have uh, a monitoring system in Flanders and also, let's say, a bit in the Netherlands and then uh, northern part of France. Within the season, someone from Inagro is driving around quite a lot. And maybe for the high risk sites, the monitoring frequency even isn't enough. Um, so, so their smart monitoring is a, would be a great tool. We're working towards it to, let's say, increase the monitoring frequency and thus giving a better uh, advice on when uh, thresholds um, are are attained or or crossed, and when, as a farmer, you need to let's say do something. Um, it also uh, involves labor savings, but of course, smart monitoring tools aren't uh, aren't cheap, so, uh, so cost benefit analysis there that is needed. So on the type of monitoring systems, smart trapping systems, you, the, the, the biggest bunch on the market are camera sensors. Um, and it can be a camera on itself, but most systems combine it with uh, image recognition where uh, uh, the, the, the pictures uh, are not uh, looked at by the human uh, operator, but uh, by a computer and it with artificial intelligence or some other kind of image recognition system. Uh, it uh, tries to detect uh, what is on the plate. Acoustic sensors, um, so uh, using sound to detect uh, pest insects, it's mainly used in storage uh, where you cannot really look into a big pile of uh, grain or um, uh, corn uh, and so on that is mainly mainly on, on dry storage. There are some acoustic sensors. Uh, acoustic sensors are, are more used. Um, systems that measure measure uh, impedance. Uh, there's uh, been a, a Z trap on the market. Um, it's uh, the insect, let's say, gets zapped uh, by a, an electrical current and in that way, the, the, the time uh, um, dependency, they can measure somewhat uh, a uh, resistance signal 
and so they can detect uh, what kind of insect it is, but first needs some calibration, of course. And then let's say for the more experimental uh, systems, they mainly rely on reflection of some wave, either be light, infrared, radio waves. Uh, some systems use radar, uh, for instance, to detect uh, large populations of pests on, on in, in, in the in the upper atmo in the upper atmosphere, uh, trying to look at migration patterns. Some systems uh, use uh, onboard processing, but most go for cloud processing. Um, and these type of sensors can be a powerful tool when combined with forecasting. We've made it within the project an overview. Uh, it's also the work of the Carl Leuven here. That's that's let's say they made a synthesis of uh, of all the the systems that we know of that could work in in vegetable production. Um, you have CapTrap, CropView, uh, also also uh, Semios, Eagleeks, Codebox, TrapView, Smoplop, the IceCode, the PodC, which are mainly camera traps on the market. Um, either they use, uh, there's a, they either use uh, uh, a pie camera, which is a small camera, but Janis will, will, demo, will go a bit more into detail on the systems, I think, or uh, uh, another kind of camera, or um, there are also systems that detect via a smartphone where the you have the sticky plate and there's an app on the on on a phone where you let's say take a picture and try to the app tries to detect what's on it uh, most of these are, with, are on the platform and i've shared the link in the in the chat um a bit of an overview of the traps, but the traps that we've tested at the Nagro within uh, the project. Um, we did a, a trial on uh, diamond back mod. Uh, first was the, the first trap is in fact the Delta, regular Delta trap, which is the manual trap. And then the second I would say is the cap trap. Um, cap trap is a French company. Um, they offer three types of uh, trap designs. Um, and we used the delta trap, which is this one, but in fact it was not, not a yellow uh, delta, um, but a, a regular white one. What I like most um, of, of the cap trap is that it's really a plug and play system. Um, it's a, it comes in the in, in a box, just one switch, and of course you still need to, to Let's say hang it on a on a on a pole, but just you flip the switch and the system works. There's like no programming and so on. It has a very similar design as the conventional del delta trap, and I would say is it is as easy in use as uh, the conventional delta trap. You just put in uh, the pheromone, um, sticky plate, flip the switch, and it works. What was a bit the downside is that uh, the platform is, uh, let's say, not it's not that aesthetic. Maybe that's also all in French, and they they added a, a, a Google Translate uh, um, feature on it. But it's of course it's not the uh, it's not the it's not a real translation. It's the Google translation, and sometimes yeah, I can say between main languages. Translation goes well, but like from French to Estonian or French to Latvian, our partners, they said, OK, but the translation is maybe not that good. And also the algorithm for the diamond back mod, as it was for them first test on diamond back mod, is not trained. So the system, in fact, could detect insects, um, but they, they tried an algorithm trained for another mod, but it didn't work well. We had a, a lot of false positives meaning that uh, the system says there's a, a diamond back mod adult in the trap when in fact there wasn't. So um, false positives is something you don't want because then, yeah, it's like a system 
that that indicates you need to do something. The threshold is is uh, is crossed, but it, it isn't. Second, a strap view from Slovenian company Ethos. Ethos is also within the consortium. Um, it's a uh, this strap I really liked about this strap that it has a sticky roll instead of a sticky plate, so the system lasts uh, a whole season. It um, when when the, the sticky plate is let's say full, you can also select the percentage. If you would say uh, the sticky plate is full at 30% coverage or 20 or 10, depending on yeah, what you want or, or, or how good the system handles all the, the insects. It tweaks with the little motor. You can have, have a clean surface again that sticks. Um, it has a Bluetooth connection. The application, the Android um, application is very nice and the platform is well elaborated. Also visually nice, it's it's clear. The onboarding of the company was really good. You get all the explanation. They really go through step by step. We did some tests with uh, a major company also with TrapView, not within the project. It was a good onboarding um, for, the, for using the trapping system. And that's also needed. That's maybe the downside. It's not plug and play. There is some installation work uh, that is needed to get it ready. It's, it comes in a box and it's like a package from IKEA. You need to uh, follow the the guide, the manual, and set it up. But once when you when you have it working, it's it's really nice because of of the features mentioned. But there's maybe downsides. This is not a Delta trap system. It's an open trust system provided by TrapView. We uh, noticed a lot of bycatch. And by bycatch, I also mean beneficial insects. We had a lot of hoverflies um, that were also caught on the trap. And I also heard that we caught two little birds uh, that got stuck on the surface because, of, because it's open. I also heard from another company that use, used it that they had a bird inside. I don't know how, how, how the little bird managed to get inside, but yeah, as let's let's say the perception that you catch uh, a little birds with the system is not a good perception, I guess. It's, it's not, it's not uh, yeah, commercially that's not uh, a good feature, I, I think. So the bycatch here is a bit more, but I don't know how this is just two instances, maybe, quite rare, uh, also depending on where you place it and so on. Uh, and then, yeah, I don't I don't know. We managed to get the birds uh, uh, out. Um, the final trap within the benchmarking um, for the project is the iScout from PESEL. Um, it's also a Delta-like trap. The one provided was black. It has a base station uh, with the battery and uh, the solar panel, and then uh, plugged into the base station is the trap. Um, it's a system that is uh, quite nice because the base station you can expand it with other sensors. So meaning that on on they also have a, a color trap which monitors monitors sticky plates. You could, for instance, on the same base station, have a delta trap and uh, a sticky plate uh, camera. Um, the platform is quite good. It's from PESEL. It integrates with other sensors from PESEL, so it's it's nice. But in our case, we had a, a small issue with um, the SIM card, uh, making it not plug and play in our case. We needed to like configure the system with uh, a terminal, uh, and I can imagine that a farmer, um, yeah, they would like. Uh, you need some IT skills to to get it up and running, and maybe also the time it takes to to find it out and so on. So that was maybe a small negative point. Also, is the battery life. The solar panel is not fixed that. Go to the system. We need to like fix it again with it's with double sided tape. Whereas the other systems, they have like a casing and it's really with nuts and bolts. Uh, this is just 
sticked on the, the double strong double sided tape need to do it again because with the original um, uh, duct or tape let's say the original tape after one day the solar panel already fell off so uh, just quite practical an issue but something I think if, if you're setting up traps like this and you, you have to set up 10 traps in, in four or five locations or even more you don't want to go around the day afterwards to fix the uh, solar panels again and also the battery life it's a, a lead battery that is used here lead acid battery all the other systems use like lithium batteries yeah lead acid is uh, heavy maybe the battery life need to maintain it a bit better uh, maintenance uh, also in winter it's like a car battery or a motorcycle battery you need to uh, plug it in uh, and charge it um, but the positive side is that those lead acid batteries are quite cheap compared to lithium batteries and you can replace it yourself with the other systems I replaced it once with the other systems I didn't yeah I wouldn't even start on, on replacing it so all in all, three traps we've used ourselves and some, let's say, positive and negative sides. Um, we did a benchmarking, uh, not only in theory, but uh, in practice, we compared uh, diff different traps. But within the project of all the uh, technology, major technology groups, we did a benchmarking. This is the benchmarking for, let's say, all the smart traps that's, that were we done our uh, site at that time of the of the project, but it's a weight, weighted scoring system on expert opinion, and sometimes you had like limited information. Uh, so when when reading our our, our benchmarking report, or uh, I would say take into account that not all the information was available, so we needed to, to be a bit selective in which which categories we could select. I had enough information to benchmark. Um, yeah, the, these are some uh, results from the tests uh, in, in uh, Flanders we've did. Uh, in general, it was a pity the diamond back mud uh, population wasn't that big. Um, we had some uh, catches in, in some in June. Um, beginning of June, I think, mid-June we saw a peak, but not that big. We did two uh, stages or two um, cultivations of um, cauliflower, uh, uh, David and Hewans, those are the names. Um, and with the traditional method, let's say, we still caught the most, but this is just an indication. I think the, um, the population and the catches weren't big enough to make hard conclusions on, on this trial. Um, and then, Say to wrap up uh, a SWOT analysis. So some of the strengths, I think, of a, a smart trapping um, that most technologies can be used in a, a wide variety of, of crops. If it's on, if it's a system for uh, catching moths, uh, yeah, you can use it in, in any crop that has a moth problem. Let's say, um, yeah. It can be used in all types of terrain, especially if you look at it with a, a, a European or like broader uh, region. Uh, yeah, you have all types of terrain, let's say, and it, it works there. Uh, most of the technologies speed up the work. Um, you don't have to go to the field, of course. Um, uh, and some technologies enable uh, uh, area-wide monitoring, uh, especially on, on, we saw that on the cap trap. So we did the benchmarking, but the same uh, trap was also in the UK and in Estonia, uh, Latvia. And on the same, we had one account for the platform and we could like see a bit each other traps uh, and, and, and see the, the pressure in the regions. Also, uh, trap view, enable uh, has that has that kind of feature to enable area-wide monitoring weaknesses costs i think um it it may pose a limitation uh, for a farmer to purchase it 
um, some uh, something yeah, that's also occurring that there's like a, an over promise. Um, and we see that a bit maybe with the ice coat. Um, it's a commercial product. It's already on the market and they say hey, we can do platella. But we had some uh, specimens and yeah, there was were no dis detection. So um, uh, there was a species there, but it didn't detect it. So also, yeah, it, it can it can lead to some mistrust, which is not something you want. Um, weakness six and five, we identified some ten uh, in each category. Six and five, they uh, six and seven, they go together. Um, uh, yeah, and what we also see is that most technology there are like no technology for really small pests, and also on diseases, um, there's no camera systems. I think on on uh, diseases that are really maybe market ripe. <laughs> um, <coughs> excuse me. And by using large number of devices on a large scale, it can become quite complex and difficult. Um, so there need to be like analytical features for the large large scale um, analysis. And yeah, it's a weakness I think that some companies can can still advance in in, in that. Some opportunities is that uh, countries are like stimulating uh, by by uh, subsidizing or, or, or co-financing those kind of technologies. Um, yeah, the companies are also trying to like set their price or their pricing system uh, in line with the value added for added value for the grower, um, meaning that we see a bit of shift from from uh, selling the traps to like selling the service where you can subscribe to a service. Um, yeah, global agriculture and legislation are supporting greener technologies, which of course um, uh, smart trapping is, is uh, part of. Um, yeah, an opportunity is like the problems can be quite um, uh, let's say farm or region specific, and there's a possibility for dialogue, especially with Rafio and the consortium. We see that tailor-made uh, systems prices are, are possible. Uh, yeah, and also an opportunity is that yeah, the, the number of products, active substances, uh, and that are really strong chemical, let's say, is, is uh, lowering a bit, and there's a growth of alternative uh, um, biological plant protection products and they need more precise application timing. So monitoring um, plays a big part of, of the efficacy of these products. And also lack of workforce, maybe yeah, just the labor, reducing labor is, a, is also a possibility and an opportunity, I think, for, for these technologies um, to, to grow into the market. Some threats, um, yeah, barrier to selling the product in countries using conventional pesticides. If you look worldwide, the example was given of, of Brazil, um, where they, yeah, if they, if if the country still has like a quite liberal um, policy on on chemical uh, pesticides, maybe yeah, this is a barrier uh, to these products. Um, also. Uh, Larger multinational companies are like buying up, they merge. And if you look at small whole farms in the world, let's say, maybe this technology, it makes it less accessible. Um, yeah, and this is an important one. The sales cycles are quite long. If you miss the season, uh yeah you have to wait until the next season to validate and so on so it's quite a long cycle for some to introduce a new a smart trap in the market uh i'm not saying all the farmers are old but it's just the demographics is that farm to the average age it's 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 higher higher and higher each year so uh there's maybe like a digital gap uh in some countries there 
uh, we also notice it in Flanders, there's quite a digital gap and like for farmers to uh, use it themselves, uh, it's not always uh, the best uh, the best possibility. Um, so as a, I think that's also the reason that companies go more to service as, a, as whereas they used to sell uh, the systems. Also, there's a, yeah, if you go to service, maybe it's a threat that the farmer is dependent on third parties. Okay, I hope I didn't go too far over time. I don't know, I didn't check it. Um, but on smart trapping, this is something uh, I, I, I could hopefully interest you in. Uh, so it was a it's a really nice pro project. I like working on the project. I hope uh, yeah, we can we have a, a good continuation also. Uh, so after Athens uh, and so on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan. That's great. Right, there there was one question in the chat, but I've I've posted an answer and and you can look at it as well, Jonathan. Um, so I think we'll we'll hand on to uh, Yanis now. So Yanis Kalfas from KU Leuven um, and Yanis is going to talk about um, approaches to automatic insect identification, which I think is sorely needed in some cases. Over to you and I can see your slides. Thanks, Yanis. Thank you very much, Rosemary. Greetings everyone, I am Janis Kalfas from Kaya Leuven and my presentation today will focus on automatic insect identification with a particular emphasis on the Flanders region where we are also located. Firstly, let me briefly introduce uh, our research team in Leuven. Our group specializes in developing innovative sensing technologies and working with advanced data analytics with a specific focus on the agri-food uh, sector. In regards to our work on automatic insect recognition, we are mainly concentrating on two key areas, image analysis and wing beat data. And during this presentation, I will provide a brief update on the progress of both these areas. So as uh, Jonathan showed earlier, traditional insect monitoring involves manual inspection by agricultural workers who visit the field or greenhouse regularly to check uh, insect traps so this process is uh, both time consuming and labor intensive, which can also lead to placing only a limited number of traps in the field or not performing uh, frequent inspections. To improve this process, researchers and companies are working on automating insect monitoring using three main lines of techniques, imaging systems, wing beat analysis and remote sensing. Uh, remote sensing is using data from weather stations, drones or satellites. So besides this, uh, there exists a commercially available bioimpedance technique that Jonathan also mentioned, the Z-trap, which is an alternative uh, option. The focus of uh, this presentation and the focus of our research is imaging systems and wing beat analysis and their current status and applications uh, in the Flanders region. As you may be aware, pests that are unique to one region may not be a top priority for international commercial insect monitoring companies. However, this provides an opportunity for collaborations between academic research and such companies. In our group, we aim to explore how imaging systems and wing beat analysis can be used to address pest related issues in our region and how such efforts can also benefit both academia and industry. So let's start by discussing uh, imaging systems. They have proven to be very helpful in analyzing sticky plates and especially effective when targeting larger insects such as moths. However, they may face challenges when it comes to smaller insects, like some species of flies. This can be due to many reasons, like limited sensor uh, resolution, insect crowding inside the trap and quick insect movements, for example, when the insects are flying. Our objective is to overcome these challenges by using cost-effective camera technologies and state-of-the-art artificial intelligence algorithms, which will allow us to detect even these small, uh, smaller insects in such difficult circumstances. As an example of our work, we have conducted a case study focused on detecting pests in vitel of chicory, a crop that is rather local to Flanders, but is also produced in other countries, even the UK. 
Uh, this crop is particularly susceptible to two types of pest insects, minor flies and woolly aphids, both of which are quite small and hard to see with our eyes. Therefore, manual inspection under a microscope is often uh, performed. Despite their small size, these pests can cause significant damage to the crop, making early detection very crucial. So uh, in the lab, we have developed a range of imaging systems, which vary in terms of uh, size, cost, and portability. Our high-end setup called Fuji Dome that you can see on the left side, on the left picture, which includes expensive hardware and the DSLR camera, is housed in our laboratory, while the two more cost-effective and portable systems are distributed to our partner research stations to aid in automatic identification and annotation of insects on sticky traps. The latest version, which we call phone box, can be used in the field with a smartphone. Now, transitioning from the lab to the field is not a very straightforward uh, process. In our research, we work mainly with uh, sticky traps as shown at the top right image. Sticky traps placed in the field are not selective by themselves and can capture multiple species on the same plate. This makes analysis and detection more challenging, but if successful, it provides a better insight on the biodiversity of the field. In contrast, selective traps that use pheromones uh, or color, for example, are designed to capture only the target species, minimizing uh, bycats. An example of a sticky plate that is placed in a pheromone trap and that is used for Delia flies is shown at the bottom right uh, image in the slide. These are more suitable for specific use cases, such as when a single pest, for example, causes most of the damage to the crop. So let's take a closer look at some of our results using the photobox system. We developed convolutional neural network models, which are a type of artificial intelligence models for image classification. We trained them on a data set of 34,000 images. The matrix on the left side of the screen displays the overall accuracy we achieved per species with high values along the diagonal indicating strong performance for a wide range of insects. When we focus specifically on the most important pest insects, we see that our model was able to identify woolly aphids with around 90% accuracy and chicory minor flies with around 97% accuracy. Now, while the model showed strong performance in identifying individual insects, it is equally important to evaluate its ability to predict insect counts on sticky plates. This is important since research institutes use insect count thresholds to determine whether certain pests have reached problematic levels. On the left side of the screen, we present a graph that compares the number of insects predicted by our model for the two main pests, woolly aphid and sequery myrfly, to the reference number provided by experts who analyzed the plates under a microscope. The graph on the right side displays the time evolution of insect presence per week in a specific field location during the year 2021. We plot the predicted counts by the model in orange and the reference counts provided by experts in blue. So we see that the model closely follows the actual distribution of insect counts for our two main pests. Important to also mention that these results are generated based on test data, namely data that the model did not see during training. Now, our work is ongoing and part of active research. Currently, we are uh, partnering in several projects aiming at bringing this technology closer to practice. We are engaged in action labs with various partners to address important pest insects for Flemish growers. Additionally, we collaborate with grower platforms to develop demonstrators and keep growers updated on our progress. We are heavily investing in artificial intelligence to create robust and accurate models with minimal labeling effort, which, as you know, is very expensive. Just to give you an idea, for the work on the chicory fields over three summer seasons, we estimated that it took about 2,000 hours of annotating insects under a microscope. That's more than 83 days or almost uh, three months. Now let's look into the wing bit analysis. This technique is based on a simple principle, which I will explain shortly. It is particularly useful for detecting small flying insects that are difficult to capture using imaging systems. In our lab, we use an optical sensor to capture wing bits, but other techniques such as radar or acoustic sensors can also be used. 
our sensor consists of two parts, a light emitter and a light receiver. You can think of them as a flashlight signing light on a photovoltaic panel. When an insect flies between these two parts, it obstructs the light from the emitter, creating shadows on the receiver and causing a fluctuation in the recorded light intensity. When the insect opens its wings, for example, less light is captured, and when it closes its wings, more light goes through. So this fluctuating light pattern is the wing bit signal, and it can be used to identify insects with high accuracy. To gather these uh, signals, these wing bit signals, we place the sensor inside the cage and release individual insects of a particular type. So as the insects fly through the cage, the sensor records wing bit data and saves it using a microelectronic device that you can see here in the picture uh, that contains an SD card. This allows us to capture the unique wing bit signals for different insect species and use them for identification and analysis. Moreover, a big benefit is that no annotation is necessary since only one insect type is released in a single cage, so we always know the labels of the data. We can extract various features from the wing bit signal in addition to the time signal, such as its frequency and time frequency representations or spectrograms, and use those for modeling purposes. Now, as another example of our research, we developed AI models to distinguish between two closely related fruit fly species. Drosophila melanogaster and Drosophila suzuki. Drosophila melanogaster is the common fruit fly that we might see in our homes if we store fruit for a long time. Drosophila suzuki is a migrating species from East Asia that has reached and expanded throughout Europe in the last few decades and caused significant damage to soft-skinned fruit. It particularly attacks ripening fruit that are still fit for sale. To train our AI models, we collected wing pit signals from both species over the course of two seasons, resulting in a data set of approximately 75,000 signals. Our AI models demonstrated high accuracy with a correct classification rate of 92%, distinguishing between uh, the two Drosophila uh, insects. To further test uh, the practicality of our approach, we are now uh, uh, conducting field trials using a trap that we co-designed and built with a research institute called PC Fruit. These traps that you can see here, the, the red uh, constru construction, are equipped with 4G connectivity and they are made of 3D printed components, making it easy to replicate them. Now to conclude, there have been significant advancements in automatic insect recognition, largely due to the progress in AI methods. Image-based and wing bit based recognition techniques have provided growers with added value for various use cases. And finally, ongoing research and development in sensor technology and data analysis are expected to further improve the current systems available in the market. So thank you for your time and listening. And for more information, please have a look at our latest research. And of course, don't hesitate to contact us using the information provided. Excellent. Thank you very much, Yanis. Um, Thank you. So now we've nearly got up to the hour. Um, thank you all to the presenters. A uh, really interesting uh, range of uh, tools and techniques there. Um, has anybody got any questions um, they'd like to ask before we finish? Either put your virtual hand up or um, in the chat. We'll try to address them. No? Oh, Gary? Hi there. Thank you very much for those interesting talks. One, one of the features of this uh, track technology is mis misidentification of species. Um, do you think generally that some of these trap developers have launched their products too quickly on the market as a general statement? Jonathan, any thoughts? Uh, I, I, I think uh, <coughs> some have. And so, some some are like uh, have installed some procedures 
to cope with um, those false positives or um, the uh, false negatives if you don't detect it. For instance, TrapView, um, they uh, they still have a, a manual, uh, uh, let's say, uh, for, for those pests where the artificial intelligence system is not, let's say, up to speed, they still do a visual confirmation of the data. So for them, it's like uh, an investment that will give some return be because what they do is they annotate. So the system gets smarter by annotating more data, by having more training data. Uh, so in that way, they optimize their AI systems. Um, but for them, it was necessary to go first into a big market, a uh, big crop, let's say, with a, a species that was a bit easy to recognize so that they had a good AI system. And from, from that way on, they, like say, are expanding into other uh, markets and, and vegetable market and so on. But for pestle, for instance, I guess there they kind of missed missed that boat. I think the the ice coat was maybe a bit yeah they promised maybe a bit too much. And for cap trap, uh, yeah, yeah there. I think we've met up with them in, at Bordeaux and they were quite honest. They say we don't have an AI system for us. This is an opportunity to benchmark and to have some training data from the project and they don't sell it as a commercial product in, in the Brassicas yet. Okay. Thank you. I, th I think that, I mean, that there's value in in sort of working with the companies on the traps and and for example some of you may remember you know there was an AHDB project um oh quite a few years ago where we looked at, at early versions of the trap view traps um and they did have some shortcomings then um but but it, they've evolved changed improved enormously since since then so and i think sometimes they they can only learn by working with people who are actually using them in real life rather than you know just just testing them themselves so so i think yeah there is an evolution process working with with growers and agronomists right any more comments questions OK, right. So I just want to say thank you very much indeed to um, our speakers this afternoon, colleagues in the Smart Protect project. And as Jonathan says, it's been it's been a, a really good project. Sadly, we were affected by COVID at the beginning. Um, but yeah, I think we've we've learned a lot and it's been a very good collaboration.